To watch all of my exclusive content not featured here on my channel, log on to my website at I'm just here to make you think.com slash fumes. A bloody insurrection led by an African-American in Virginia 30 years before the Civil War. Ten on your side, Tom Shattery traces the slave rebellion and the movement to preserve this piece of hidden history. Retraces the slave rebellion and the movement to preserve this piece of hidden history. This piece of hidden history. That's right, Laura and Steph. This is a story. This is a story about one of humanity's basic yearnings, a passion to be free. That's why historians want to save what's left. That's why historians want to save what's left from this deadly uprising in Southampton County. So, tell me, here we are. I'm a slave master. You're my slaves. I spent a hundred years beating up on you, your grandmama, your great grandmama, mm. making you work for nothing for me. Centuries after centuries. And then one day independence must come. I said, okay, fine, let's have independence. Let's sit down and talk about it. Here's how your independence gonna go, okay? <laughs> Let me tell you. Independence is signed, we all happy, we shake hands. How sweet. All the land that I took from your family remains my land, of course. And now you out in the streets begging. You know what I'm gonna say? Look at this bum, what is wrong with him? These black folks can't do nothing for themselves. Here he begging, begging, always begging. And we are so stupid. We won't even say, yeah, I'm begging because you stole my land. One of the most vitally important issues of our age, and that is the United Nations Agenda 21, Sustainable Development. It is the inventory and control plan, inventory and control of all land, all water, all minerals, all plants, all animals, all construction, all means of production, all food, all energy, all information, and all human beings in the world. And this is a plan that was agreed to by 179 nations back in 1992. It's a United Nations plan. It's called the Agenda for the 21st Century. And so many of us around the world think that um, well, sustainable development, it just sounds so great. Isn't it about recycling and creative reuse and uh, and creating energy and food resources for everyone and the answer is no it really is not it's about moving populations into city centers concentrated city centers and clearing them out of the rural areas i found out about it um, in a very unusual way actually because uh, i spent my career as a legal uh, witness as an expert witness for the California Department of Transportation. I'm an expert in land use and land valuation and uh, my specialty is in eminent domain valuation. So of course I was valuing property for the government so that the government could acquire that property for road projects. And what I found about 10 years ago uh, around uh, or 10 or 13 years ago uh, was that land actually it was very difficult to say what it was worth because you couldn't know what people could do with it because they were being restricted from using their property Nat Turner was indiscriminate 
in a brutal way of trying to spread fear throughout the county. Nat Turner saw it as something wrong. He decided to do something about it. It was horrific. It created a lot of pain for both sides and he paid the price for it. Nat Turner is my great, 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 third great grandfather. I am documenting this on August 6, 2017. I am still making my way throughout the historic landmasses of the Virginia Colony of London, also known as the Charter of the Virginia Company of London. But the majority of people watching knows this land as Virginia, the Commonwealth State. And make no mistake, I am not in London. I am still in North America at this time. Further south from where I documented my last vlog in Jamestown Island. You wouldn't believe where I am right now. But I must share this important information with all of you. For this is very essential when it comes to the authentic historical doctrine of our true indigenous ancestors of North America. Many people are familiar with the story concerning the information that I'm about to share with you, but those people that have shared the story tends to leave out multiple key factors surrounding its importance to our history and its relevancy of details revealing the factual truth about this one leading individual having been a contemporary of the indigenous aborigines. So join me on this journey and bear witness to what you're about to see. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, right now, I'm in Southampton, Virginia, Southampton. I'm like about five or six miles from Jerusalem, uh, which is now called Portland. And I wanted to grab this real quick. I hope you guys can see me. I wanted to grab this side real quick because I'm almost there. And they have this on the street. I mean, literally, um, it's called, this is called Jerusalem Parkway. Uh, this is the Southampton County sign. I want to point something out to you uh, so you can get an idea where I'm coming from on this. If you can't see this, I'm definitely going to be putting a picture up. Uh, but that says Department of Historic Resources 2003. I also want to point out that it says um, the preacher and slave, you know, they call him a slave, Nat Turner. Uh, <clears throat> this is where the rebellion took place. Actually, it's a little bit further down. I'm going to show you exactly where it took place. Hopefully, if I could get to it, because the way they set the Nat Turner story up, since everybody got, since everybody got, and you're hearing the cars go past me, since everybody got interested in the Nat Turner story, they started removing uh, certain artifacts and certain things that you could catch up on uh, with. So you won't know that Nat Turner was in fact an indigenous aborigine right here in Turtle Island, AKA North America. But I just want to point out the fact that it says, um, I mean, of course you can see the Nat Turner na name. This says the county seat is Cortland, which I'm heading right to, formerly called Jerusalem. That's very important. Soon after transitioning into power as the King of England in 1589, the Catholic Scottish ruler, King James IV of Scotland, became King James I of England. James was solely responsible for dubbing the land occupied by the Nataway Indians as Jerusalem, Virginia, in the early 1600s, once he ordered white settlers to colonize land in the, quote, New World, not obstructing lands in Florida and the Caribbean due to the Spaniards overseeing those Indian territories already, preventing any contravention of set treaties. The King James Version Bible is named after him due to James commissioning it and later authorizing the publication of it in 1611. I'll go into full detail about this in a later documentary, 
but its relevancy is essential to note due to its timely establishment surrounding this topic. I am here, ladies and gentlemen. This is what I wanted to show you guys. I'm inside of the town of Cortland, okay? Town of Cortland, which is a part of Southampton, Virginia. And yes, this is the Nat Turner's Insurrection um, Historic Marker. Um, I'm gonna read this off to you. Uh, just, oh, before I do that, let me make note, you know how I do this. Note that this says Department of Historic Resources, 1991. Okay, so we're going to be going into this. So I'm going to read this off quickly. Um, uh, if you can't hear me quite well, it's because I'm literally right here. You can see the cotton field that it's directly beside. Notice that this is a cotton field that is directly beside. And across the street is also a cotton field, um, which, is, which is quite, you know, the spot that they chose to put this historic marker in. Keep that in mind. <laughs> uh, Cotton Fields is where this is located, right here off of um, 35, in which I j just showed you guys about the um, initial landmark of where Southampton County started, um, right there off of Jerusalem Park Road. And yes, this is nothing but Cotton Fields. And to go ahead back to the i'm going to read this off right now to go back to it it says on the night of 21 22 august 1831 we know that is august uh 21st through the 22nd of 1831 nat turner a slave preacher began an insurrection some seven miles west with a band that grew to be about 70. uh what they're talking about is like 70 uh, people that he had running with him they moved northeast toward the Southampton County seat Jerusalem now called Cortland okay uh, which is where I'm located right now killing about 60 whites after two days militant men and armed civilians quelled the revolt Turner was captured on 30 October which is um, the 30th of October tried and convicted and which I do want to mention guys um, that I passed the Cortland uh, courthouse which was on the way down here but it came up so quick that I wasn't able to grab that footage um, if I'm able to go back I will but I do want to make way to Fort Christiana so I'm not too sure if I'm gonna have time to do that because of course I'm running on a time schedule here and I'm getting bit up and ate up because everything is up to my feet right here uh, because of where it's located as you can tell I had to jump over a ditch just to get here off of the road I mean it is awkwardly placed okay uh, so let me go back to this uh, he was tried and convicted and hanged on November 11th. I'm going to say it correctly. They said 11 November. Some 30 blacks were hanged or expelled from Virginia. In response to the revolt, the General Assembly passed harsher slave laws and censored abolitionists. Um, abolitionists like, for example, Frederick Douglass, for example. I'm going to use him as an example. He was also an abolitionist. Usually, the abolitionists are now known as your modified versions of politicians which is you know the democrats or the republicans and i'm out here to uncover all of the history that wasn't told okay and there's a reason why they're separating so much stuff about the nat turner story because of course they don't want you to know most of the stuff that i do know and mo some people do know of i'm just going to try to capture it as much as i can I'm probably going to be doing some more recording in Full Christiana. I hope I could throw all of this in one video uh, because everything is about an hour and a half away from each other. Even Rebecca's house, the um, house that... One second. Yeah, that house um, was removed uh, from its initial location. From its initial location. From its initial location. From its initial location. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, now I definitely wanted to get inside of this topic uh, briefly with you guys because there's a lot of information I don't want to cover uh, that I didn't get a chance to mention in my last vlog. And in my last vlog, I did promise you that I'm definitely going to be going into further depth 
with this information concerning the Nat Turner topic of the reason why his historic sites and artifacts are being removed or dismantled rather. Unfortunately, I discovered a lot of stuff that people are probably not gonna like, okay? Uh, but first, before I jump into that, let me definitely shout out the people that have been donating to me and supporting me because that helped me get most of this information and as well as come out here to document uh, this information. And I wanna jump straight into it because there are, are multiple books that are being published uh, and movies, you know, uh, concerning the Nat Turner story. And it's just that, it's just concerning the Nat Turner story. And this is what I wanna mention. All of this information that's being publicized right now is definitely not adding up. It's not adding up. And I'm gonna break down why. Number one, what evidence do we have to lay claim to the Nat Turner story? Not much, I mean, because there's no grave sites, there's no bones, uh, all the historical houses has, have been removed from its loca original location. Uh, the historic houses that were at its original location has been dismantled. So there's no true information about Nat, just the story that we were told about him. And number two, I, I wanna definitely go into the story you know, of Nat Turner, those, those dates are not adding up. Those dates are not adding up. How is it that you kill all of these people, okay? All these white people, men, women, and children within a 24 hour span. Then two days later, you get halted by the militant men. You, all, everything, they, they just stopped, the, they quelled the revolt in two days. Now we talking about the 1830s here. Okay, mid 1800s, there was no internet, there was no cell phone. How did they get that word that quick? Not only that, they captured him right then and there, or locked him up rather, captured him. That's the terminology that they used. And he was sitting in jail all the way until November 11th on his trial date. So, what white man you know? was going to let a quote-unquote black man sit in jail after killing 50 to 70 white people. Sit in jail? During that time period? Because to, to go back, let me go back a little bit, because to catch him, that I, how? How? I, I'm down here. This is a lot of land to cover. These houses are not next door to each other. That's a lot of land. How did you catch him? The houses were not side by side. That's impossible to do that within what? 24 to 48 hours. That's impossible. How do you know where he was? But yet he was caught, tried and hanged three months later. That just don't sound right. It, it, that doesn't add up. Number three, where are his pictures? Where are the authentic pictures of Nat Turner? Okay, I mean, I went to the Library of Congress. I went to multiple libraries. And I tried my very best to find an authentic picture of Nat Turner and the National Archives. And they usually on top of everything, okay? Even if the government didn't like it, see? Now, when you go to Google and type in pictures of Nat Turner, they showing you pictures of a young Frederick Douglass. Hello? Hello? Does this add up to you? Dred Scott, okay, the one where they he went to court to try to fight for his rights as a quote-unquote black man, and and the judge was like, uh, y'all don't have no rights? Let, they go sit up there and say Nat Turner had a lawyer. I'm gonna get into that in a second, but mind you, Dred Scott is from the exact same area Nat Turner is allegedly from. South Hampton County, Virginia, okay? They born a year apart from each other, all right? Now, how come the National Archives and the LOC got authentic pictures of Dred Scott? And he was in court just as well as Nat Turner was, allegedly, and you ain't got no pictures of Nat Turner? But you got pictures of Dred Scott. Not only that, you, Department of Historic Resources, 
in Virginia, you can sit there and tell me when the first African slaves was imported here in the United States, okay? And then you could tell me when the first African slaves made it and created the first African American baby in America, you could document that, but you can't give me a picture of Nat Turner. You can't give me, hold on now, you can't give me his mother's first and last name, his father's first and last name, date of birth, place of birth, see there? Where, where, this, where is this information? And, and so now, they done created a movie saying, oh, Nat Turner had a son and he had a wife. Now, all of a sudden, they got proof, but what about his lawyer's documents from 1831? What about those? His alleged lawyer was a racist, bigoted, white immigrant named Thomas Gray, who was dead broke. He kept spending his money on gambling uh, right there with, 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 I think his name is French. I'm gonna pull it up. Gambling all of his money, but they gonna say he's smart because he went to a university now, got his little lawyer degree. And number one, he wasn't Nat Turner's lawyer. But they gonna sit up there and use his book that he created, okay, in order for him to gain money so he could not be broke no more and go create the uh, first official book stating Confessions of Nat Turner in 1831. Now, where have we heard this before? You created and published that book after Nat Turner died. This don't ring a bell to y'all? Alex Haley? Autobiography of Malcolm X got released after he died? Said he sat right there and wrote all that down. They came out and said that was fictitious. And you think Thomas Gray telling you the truth? He sat down there with Nat Turner. You think Nat Turner gonna sit in jail and tell this white boy after he done killed a whole bunch of white people, he gonna sit there and tell a white boy why he did it, where he came from, what's going on? Oh, my family from here, my wife's name is? None of that is adding up to me. Is it adding up to you? Thomas Ruffin Gray. It says right here that he represented several slaves in court. He didn't represent Nat Turner. Who represented Nat Turner was French. Uh, his, his first name was James French. James Strange French. His middle name is Strange. Represented Nat Turner in court. Allegedly now, because th this is based off the documents that's in the uh, National Archives. So don't get it confused, you know, that uh, Thomas Rutherford Gray was Nat Turner's lawyer. No, he wasn't. It was James Strange French that was his lawyer. Thomas just so happened to be there, okay? Trying to document all this stuff as much as he can so he can make some money. He was broke, big time gambler. He ain't had no money. He put out that Confessions of Nat Turner book to get money and was very successful doing it. And that also helped uh, other white settlers, okay, with knowing how to treat people that were rebellion. Because rebellion, because see, keep in mind, it was multiple raids happening at that time. Multiple Indian raids happening at that time period, during that time period, especially in Virginia. So I, I could get pictures of James French, I could get pictures of Thomas Gray, but I'm talking about authentic pictures, but I can't get no pictures of Nat Turner. All these other books that came after 1831 and the movies as well was all based off of information coming from Thomas Gray, okay, that he alleged in, 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 in publicized in his book, and we're going to believe him after what Nat Turner just did. We gonna believe a white man to tell the story about Nat Turner. Not only that, it was admitted in the court documents that I have right now. Thank you all for donating because I was able to purchase this costly doc, these costly documents. You can't pull this up. You can't pull this up. I got it. Okay, now 
also what was mentioned in there was the fact that that whole entire story was fictitious. Okay, and then on top of that, when it was publicized in 1831, it was publicized in the fictional section. Not only that, when it was revised and published again by uh, William Stryman, or, or what was his name? No, Stryman, something like that. William Stryman in 1960, that was also put in the fictional section. And it was also called Confessors of Nat Turner. William was born in Southampton. Thomas was born in Southampton. And the, oh, okay, so the same white people that he was killing gonna be the same white people to tell his story? See, all, all this was about money. All of this was about money. You don't have evidence, but nothing but the story that Thomas Gray created. Like right now, if we didn't know nothing about Malcolm X, everybody would believe everything that uh, Alex Haley put inside of that book about Malcolm X here. And Malcolm X's own family came out and told you that wasn't real. So I'm going to sit here and tell you based off of me doing these travelings and, and looking at this land and trying to add everything up, looking at how far the court was from, listen, that whole entire story was fictitious. Nat Turner did not give up his names of his family members, his children, not, none of that. Where he was, none of that. All that stuff was made up and made to look good so Steve, uh, uh, I'm sorry, uh, Thomas Gray can make some money. That's what that was. He was gambling. Him and his other white boys were spending that money. They needed another way to make that money. Okay? They capitalized off of a Nat Turner story that they created. See, and see, and that's that's the problem that I have right there. Cause see, mind you, I said earlier, mind you, there were multiple Indian slave rebellions occurring during that time period, especially in Virginia. And the alleged one that they duly noted and historically publicized is not Turner's. See, I, this is this is the reason why I'm here. This is the reason why I'm here. I'm just here to make you think.